Hello friends, how are you? Happy weekend and thank you for joining me in another video. As you can see, I am once again using my diluted acrylic paints. And if you have any questions on how to mix those or how to achieve this look, I have explained everything in my previous video of last week, which I will link in the description box and I will also have it linked at the end of this video if you want to go and have a look. In there I will explain exactly how I mix it. Well, not exactly because there is actually no science to it. I just mix it with water. But just in case you're curious, it's all in there. I won't touch on that in this video too much because there is too much other stuff I want to talk about as usual. I wanted to play with the blues and the greens because those are some of my favorite colors. But I also pulled out the purple because I thought they would look really nice together. And for full transparency, before I did this one, I actually did a few other ones and they did not turn out the way I had hoped. I used way too much water on my paper. I wanted to try this method on the regular Canson paper. The last week's video I had used 100% cotton paper and it soaked up the water and the paint quite nicely, but the Canson paper is a little bit more slick than the B paper and so I wanted to try it on this one just to see if it gives me a different surface at the end. So I had used quite a lot of water and then it had soaked into the edges of the paper too much and I did not like that look. So I decided to try it again and not use as much water and that worked a little bit better. It still kind of soaked into the edges of the paper a little bit, but not as much. As you can see, in order to get this flowiness of the colors, I have to use quite a bit of water, which also means it will dilute the colors even more so I add more color as I go and because the colors are already diluted in the from the beginning me then adding more water just lets that color flow quite nicely and I really like when it does that but I end up with a lot of waste and so I decided that I would put down some sandwich paper and catch all of the droppings so that I can use the sandwich paper for other backgrounds in the future. In case you're unfamiliar with this kind of paper, it is very thin. It is what it says. It's for wrapping sandwiches. So. Um, I like to use it on a canvas or even on regular watercolor paper. It just gives it some texture without giving too much bulk. I go through quite a few of these papers uh, and I let them dry and then I stack them and I come back later and I do the same thing again just to add more color to it, more paint to it, more texture to it and I might even use stencils later on and things like that. 
So I thought I was done and then I, I remembered again very late that I wanted to use gold and so I had to mop up some of that water that was still sitting on that paper and those are the lighter spots that you see because I am adding the gold and then adding more water to it. It would have just been too much water so I mopped it up a little bit and then I had to add more color again. That was a bad decision making on my part because I just keep forgetting to use the gold. I mean, who forgets to use the gold? Seriously. So here comes another paper just in case um, because I now am introducing the gold and I can catch that as well. It's better than just letting it drip back into my water jug and let it go to waste. You know me, I don't like to waste anything. I liked the way it looked before I remembered to put the gold on. So now I am trying to recreate what I had. And of course that never works. So I am just adding more gold and more paint until I am happy with the way it looks and with the texture that it's giving me. I was contemplating on whether I should scratch it and start again or keep going. And I decided to just keep going because what have I got to lose? nothing and in the end I'm glad I did although I was still not convinced that this would amount to anything fun sometimes I just have to put a little bit more work into a background and that's okay it's part of the process but because I had already done a few other backgrounds that I wasn't happy with. I just was determined to make this one work and so I just kept working on it until I felt like I could leave it to dry. Also because I had used so much water I wasn't quite sure how well it was going to dry, meaning how um, the texture would end up and how the colors would stay so it was all a little bit of a guessing game at this point by the way all of this footage is real time i did not speed this process up for reasons because i really want you guys to see how long it takes me to get to where i want to be and the steps that I need to apply and reapply and add water and take it off and all of that. Yes, I did cut out a few things in between that were unnecessary, but all of this footage is real time and I think it helps seeing the process and realizing that it's not just one coat and then you're done. It takes several attempts to get to a point where you can feel satisfied. We are nearing um, a, a place where I feel comfortable leaving it to dry. Uh, the paper always buckles a little bit, so I'm trying to keep it as um, flat as possible but this looks good and so now that it is dry I can go ahead and start with the doodling process. My hands were pretty dirty after all of um, that playing around with color but I am happy to say that the Dawn dish soap does a really good job at taking it all off and so if you are worried if you don't like to wear gloves like me. Um, try the Dawn dish soap. It really works wonders. On to the doodling process and I approached this one the same way that I did my last one, meaning I am looking for structures and I'm just putting down some finer lines first and then I go in and I make them a little bit more pronounced later on. Sometimes I really have to work hard on 
not taking my lines too serious and just get over the fact that they look very silly in the beginning. Everything is a process and the lines are as well. Using a very fine pen in the beginning just kind of helps me figure out how to proceed next. I don't like going in with a thick pen right from the bat. That's just me. Um, it just helps me figure out where to place things and see the lines a little bit better. And I like to go in later on and make some of those lines a little bit thicker if I feel like it needs more. I first look for structures within the colors and then I go for shadings and when I can't find anything else I will connect certain lines with new ones and to just to try to fill up the the spaces a little bit more I try not to overdo it and so if I have larger areas that I'm unsure of what to do with I will leave those empty for the moment and then go in later on if I feel like it needs more I am also looking for balance within the lines and the colors so that is always in the back of my mind when I do these things is it balanced does it look good to the eye is it does it need more does it need less so I'd rather just start out with less rather than more you can always add more later you can fill it up with doodles, you can fill it up with marks, you can, you know, add dots, whatever. So I, I try to not overdo it. And sometimes you put down silly things and you're like, why did I do that? For example, these little guys, I didn't like them per se, but I was like, okay, I'll just, I'll, I'll put them there now. It's The lines are done. There's nothing I can do about it now. Let's just see if I can continue to incorporate them in a different way later on. And when that happens, I just move on. I try to not, not to look at it too much and just move on to another section. And then later on, usually I can make it work. So if that happens to you, just leave it be for a while and then maybe come back later and see if you can work on it a little bit more. Sometimes a piece just flows and that's what happened with my last one. And I loved the colors from the get-go and I just knew it was going to turn out really well and it turns out a lot of you liked it as well this one I loved the colors from the beginning but it just I wasn't quite happy with it and throughout the doodling process I still felt like that and I just wasn't sure whether I was going to pull it together and make it look like something. The other one just kind of had had this feel from the very beginning and this one did not. And so I was a little bit worried. And when I say worried, I, I don't want you to take me too seriously. You know, it's just me trying to figure out what else can I do to make this work for example um, the top ones of these they in the end turned out a little bit too dark because I had put them on the darker purple and so I went over them with a white pen just to make them stand out a little bit more but I still wasn't quite happy with how they looked so I knew I needed to work on them a little bit more but I let them be for now and I moved on to other things 
And I know it all looks like I know exactly what I'm doing at any point in time. And I can assure you that I walked away from it many, many times. I even let it go for a day because I just couldn't figure out how to proceed. And that's okay. I had different ideas at some point and then the next day when I came back I decided to do something completely different and I know that doesn't always come through in those videos because the magic of editing makes it look like I have it all figured out but just know that sometimes days go by um, until I come back to it and proceed with the doodles. I think it's a very natural process to approach a, a painting that way. I feel stepping back and coming back to it at a later point gives you a different perspective just as much as um, people that work on big canvases. They turn it they, you know, they go, if you're filming yourself, they, they, you go back and you look through the lens, through the viewfinder to see what it looks like. Do whatever you need to do to figure out your next steps. And uh, this, is, this is no different on a smaller scale. As much as I loved the colors of the background, I loved the shading from my last piece so much that I knew I needed to bring it into this one as well. Uh, it just makes it pop so much more and gives it more dimension. It makes it look like some things stand out a little bit more, some things are maybe set more to the back. It's really amazing what a little bit of shading does to a piece. It was also much easier to blend the pencils into each other on this paper because the Canson watercolor paper is a lot smoother than the 100% cotton B paper that I used in my last one. So keep that in mind if you don't mind uh, too many of the strokes, that those pencil strokes on your paper. Um, you know, you're fine, but if you're a little bit worried, um, know that Canson watercolor paper is a lot, lot smoother and you will have an easier time blending these colors together. And like last time, and like I always do, I love using a lot of different colors when I shade. I don't just use one shade of color. I use many, many different colors and I feel it gives it a lot of texture and a lot of depth that way. Going back to the dimension part, this part coming up here, you can really see what I mean. I started with black and then I went with purple and blue and just kept adding shading to this line and it made it pop so much more. I really, really um, think this is a great example of what I mean when I say it gives it dimension. Look at how this just pops off the page that way. I felt like this space needed a little something and because I had these ones on the opposite side, I decided to bring them in over on this side as well. I just love these little guys, they're so cute. And to make them look like they're growing more out of that line, I just added a little more rounded corners or edges to um, those stems. Sometimes it doesn't need a whole lot to fill the space and that's exactly what happened with these 
shapes, these rock shapes that I included. I wasn't quite sure what to do with them and so I decided to just shade them. And I, again, it made them pop off the page so much more than just keeping them the way they were. And I later on added some dots to the other side and I just fell in love with, with those. It, it, sometimes there is a section of a painting that you just fall in love with and that really made it, made the page for me. As much as shading adds to a piece, dots to me finish it off. By now, and I've said this before, and I'm sorry if I um, keep repeating myself, but so many of you have never seen my previous paintings, and so maybe you have not heard me say this, but the dots, I can now that I have used them a lot, I will create spaces just for those. Like, for example, um, the lines that I did up top there, they are not finished yet. And I know by when I put them down, I know I want to use those lines for the dots. Sometimes I use dots to lighten up a space. I, I could have done white lines, um, but you know me, I just love my little dots. And so it's important to uh, know to do the shading first if you want to add stuff like that on top. Shading later on would have made this so much more difficult. So by um, kind of figuring out your steps ahead of time, you will, uh, you will have a much easier time later on. Here I shaded in between the doodles and so I knew I couldn't shade on top of them. That would not have made any sense and so I just added some dots to it. And this is, uh, these are the, the lines that I was talking before. Uh, it, they just pop so much more with a, just a few dots. Now, of course, you know, just be because I do it doesn't mean you have to do it too. You find your own style, you find your own things that you fall in love with and that you just can't um, paint without adding them. So just try out a few things and see what you like best. I could have put dots in there too, but I decided to uh, give it shading with a very, very fine pen and... I really liked that I didn't use dots on these. I knew I needed to bring in a little bit more white, so I chose this space to paint with acrylic paint uh, because it stays white and it covers very well um, so I decided to use acrylic paint for this part but then it stood out too much and so now I'm coming back to these guys and because I knew I wasn't finished with them now I knew that these needed some white too and again this is what will balance your piece. Had I not added any more white to that side of the painting it would not have looked balanced out. I would have liked to have another bigger area where I could put some white acrylic paint on top but the the piece didn't lend itself for that so in the end I chose to add some gold dots to that bigger wider part because I, I just felt like it was sticking out a little bit too much as, and so it just needed a little something on top this was another part that I left open until the very end because I wasn't quite sure what to add. And because I already had some of these, um, 
square shapes um, already I felt like instead of using a round shape um, I would just bring in those and they turned out quite cute especially after I put the little dots on them <laughs> surprise surprise we are almost at the end here and I do have some final thoughts that I have put at the end of this video if you want to stick around for that. But I wanted to say thank you for tuning in today and for being patient with me. I know this video uh, came a day late again. Uh, as you can see, I was busy trying to figure out what to put on this background. <laughs> and it just took me a little bit longer to figure it out. But thank you again so much for uh, being with me here today. I hope you found this video uh, entertaining and I, maybe you learned something maybe um, there is things that you want to incorporate in your doodling process uh, or your background creating and if you do let me know in the comments below I always love hearing from you and um, yeah just um, thank you for um, spending some time with me today Well, 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 this one took me for quite a ride. As I mentioned throughout the video, I wasn't sure whether this one was going to make it. And I feel like I say that a lot and it's the truth. I wasn't having a hard time laying down the lines I knew there was enough interest in the background for me to do something with it. But once I had the lines down, it was really hard for me to pull it together. Parts of it I wish, still wished now that I didn't do, such as these guys down here. And I wish I hadn't filled this all the way in in white because I still feel like it is a little bit too stark in comparison to everything else. But then there's also pieces that I really love, such as this row of rocks with the gold dots. I love the shading. I think it really pulled it all together and made it into something more that I thought it was going to be in the beginning. I also added a little something to it and I'm wondering if you caught it and if you did please let me know in the comment section. Just leave me either a word or leave me an emoji if you spot it. That way I will know whether you made it all the way to the end of this video. And if you did, I want to thank you once again, like I always do. I appreciate you all and I appreciate all of you that watch all the way to the end. So with that, I'm going to leave you with it and I hope to see you next week.